Hi, this is Kurt from Metal Church, and I'm blowing it up here on Capital Chaos TV. You are number 666. How's it going? This is the Iron Serbian with Capital Chaos TV. We're hanging out here with Kurt of Metal Church. How's it going, Kurt? Awesome. It's going great. Back here in San Francisco, the birthplace of Metal Church. So it's very nice. Yep. Not only are you in the, the, the city of the, the birthplace of Metal Church, but you're actually in the, the neighborhood of the birthplace of Metal Church. Yeah, the actual Metal Church, the apartment I lived in, was right over there on the next block, literally. Yeah, so we're going to go over there and do a photo shoot later. Oh, so. good. So it's still there. Yes, it's just a, it's just a flat. It's a, you know, just an, not an apartment, but yeah, a two-bedroom or a two-level two house with, you know, an upstairs and a downstairs apartment in it. And that's where it all started. What was rent like back in 19... Uh, 19- 1979, 1980, about then. If I remember correctly, I paid like 200 bucks for my share of the place. So I think the whole place was like 800 bucks, I think. And then, so now it would be like three grand, probably right. something ridiculous. Oh, more than at that. least, yeah. And, and it was also, this area was nothing but warehouses. So <laughs> we, all us punks lived down here because it was cheap, but yeah, that was before dot com. So. No, <laughs> no, man, a studio in San Francisco is three grand. I know, right? But, Who hey, knew? Oh that's well. That's the uh, just the, the times change, and that's the reality of things, that's right? The way the world is now, yeah, exactly. So uh, I live. I don't live in a city anymore. It's too expensive. No doubt. <laughs> you uh, are you still out in there in, in Washington? Yes, uh, Aberdeen, Washington. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's that's like a little, a little suburb, or it's uh, not even a suburb, really. It's just a little depressed little logging town on the coast of Washington. Yeah. You know? It's uh, it's where I grew up and where the band started. So you know, I mean, well, the band. Actually, technically started from here, but I moved back there and reformed the band after being here for a while. And with the lineup that became the first lineup was from Aberdeen. So, but initially I was trying to put it together here. So, did you? Uh, I know that punk was uh, pretty big in uh, 19, the late 70s. Just uh, you, why did you not decide to uh, become a skinhead as opposed to a long hair? Oh, I did it on its own. But okay. yeah, <laughs> no. Well, I moved down here from Seattle with my punk band, The Lude, and we were down here uh, for a couple of years. And then I kind of got out of that because of started getting wind of the new wave of British heavy metal, which had the punk attitude and aggression and the power, but yet had more musicality to it. And I was like, okay, I'm in on that. And that's when I switched and started trying to put Metal Church together here. And that's where, the, like I said, the name came from the apartment a block away from here. Here, so, yeah. Do you have fond memories of playing here, playing the farm? Do you have oh, any yeah. memories of all at all? I, you know, I'm very fortunate that I do have memories of all of it. Yes, I do. We played the Mabuhay a lot, you know, and the Stone and all the various punk clubs that don't exist around here anymore. Yeah, and and uh, doing all that, yeah, it was great. It was the beginning of the whole thing and feeling not only being a part of the punk movement, the first generation punk movement here, but then being also being a part of the, the, the first wave of the thrash metal thing. So it was really fun being part of something that we knew was a, a whole new movement in music. So it was great. So you must have felt like you must have had some emotional oh, yeah, yeah. attachment to the whole thing. Oh, absolutely. I mean, sitting here right now, it's like I'm just kind of like, I remember that building, and I remember there was parties up there in that place. You know, I don't remember whose, but I remember going in there. and just So just kind of being here right now is a little bit it's a little bit trippy and a little emotional, actually. Uh, yeah, absolutely. In a wonderful, in a great way, in a great way. Holy, so. holy. And uh, uh, Metal Church and Flotsam and Jetsam, as well as a whole slew of other bands from... Uh, a far gone era all have great new releases out yeah it's, yeah it's great that all of us are still working you know because i i don't think uh, if you would have told me back when i was 22 that you'd still be doing this in your mid-50s you know legitimately not like yeah. as some novelty you know has been kind of thing you know uh just be doing it legitimately at this point i would have laughed and said no way you know because like you know back then you were done when you were 30 right. you know but it's a whole different ball game now fortunately so yeah and uh, you're, uh, as far as the writing and the, the the process of putting this album together, you're you're the primary you're primarily in control of the whole thing. Is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, just by just by facility, basically. But yeah, doing the songwriting, and then uh, we record the uh, the album at my studio, and I engineer and produce them. So, you know, because it's all the way the industry is now is, you know, most every band can tell you it's all pretty much do it yourself now, which is great. You know, the whole need for a big, huge, major label situation and and all the money that you used to have to get from to you to make a record you know those days are all gone you know right. so and so it's it's perfect now and that's why you know guys like us at our age you know armored saint and well voivod's playing over there right. tonight and you know we can all still 
still get to do this without that major record company filter, you know, which is wonderful. And that's why we're, we're still able to work and do what we love to do, you know. So it took me a while to get used to the new music business. But now that I have, it's, uh, it's wonderful. I couldn't be happier with it, you know. There's a downside with the piracy. But the rest of it's all good because it's direct artists to fans now and there's no expiration date on us anymore. You know, as long as we can still, you know, do a good job and write good music and do, put on good shows, as long as the people st keep showing up, we're still, we'll keep playing, you know. Is it hard to, uh, in, in today's economy or lack thereof, <laughs> of, of, of people just taking music from the internet, is it difficult to even justify spending money on uh, recording uh, new, uh, new music? Well... Yeah, but like I said, the, the, the fact that like before the advent of digital, which now digital finally came around to actually where it sounds good if you use it correctly, to where most people have home studios now. Most people record your record, so you don't need $150,000 advance from the record company. And that, in turns, if you take an advance from a record company, you don't need to pay that back because you know you don't have that recoupable thing going on so you don't spend nearly the amount of money as you did now granted the amount of money that you potentially make now is considerably different but your overhead's a lot less too so i mean we sell 10,000 records we make as much money as a band as we did if we would have sold you know you know 400,000 records in the old way of doing things so it all balances out the bottom line is is we still get to play we get to do it on our terms we don't have anybody telling us what to do we make the record how we want to make it we it's done when we say it's done we put it out when we put it out you know we're working with Rat Pack Records and they're like the uh, the actual mirror you know mirror image of what we're doing now as a band they're doing the same thing as a record company to where we have a partnership with them we're not you know it's not record company artist you know thing it's we have a working relationship right. with them which is perfect you know it's absolutely you know like I said again there's no expiration date on us we can keep doing this you know so it's very cool you are number six six six